Hi, I'm Brett. Today I got a video update on some of the common weaknesses and preventable things that you need to be aware of when you're modifying your Subaru. And in particular, we're talking about the Subaru STI EJ 2.5 series of engines. In our other videos, we've spoken to strengths and weaknesses, what you can get out of these engines from a performance update, what you need to be aware of from a maintenance. But what we've got here today is a piston out of one of our R&D vehicles. Now, this particular piston is out of the STI um, project car, which is a MY15, MY16 STI that um, is owned by uh, Whiteline, which is, we've been involved with for some time. Now, I will point out this car has now got over 50,000 Ks on it. It's absolutely had a flogging over its life. Um, Andy Forrest has done two separate um, track test days at uh, World Time Attack in this car, plus the guys at Whiteline have done numerous track days and uh, Whiteline tarmac events in the vehicle. So it's a really good indication of a car that's had a fairly extensive hard life and a tar that's also got a typical amount of kilometres on it, 50,000 Ks, two years old, is what you would expect out of most uh, road going uh, cars that are doing occasional track use. And you can see the engine is here beside me, um, we're about to strip it apart, but let's talk about how we got to this. You'll see in our previous video how we've spoken about we did a comp and a leak down test from a preventative testing point of view because we suspect that the engine was down on power. Now this car did have an MRT XA power kit done on it very early in its life, but it's a good example to point out that there's nothing you can do to prevent um, long-term hard wear and tear and the brittleness of the hypertectic pistons that occur in these cars. Now, no matter what you do from a tuning point of view, you just can't cover everything from a reliability point of view, and hence um, our factory warranty guarantee kicks in, but of course that is affected by the amount of time it spends at a track. So we'll talk about that separately, but let's have a talk about the actual piston itself. Now, for all intents and purposes, if you have a look at it at the moment, you probably don't see too much, but if I hold it sideways, and these are the parts that fall out. Now, as you can see, if I get my cameraman to get up close, this is the crown of the piston here, which you can see is quite typical of a car that's done 50,000 Ks. Um, the piston um, compression ring is at the top and the oil control ring is at the bottom. And what typically happens on a hyper detected piston in a Subaru is they crack these side components out of the skirt of the piston. Now you can see on the top there's no signs of detonation which means the cars have been running excessive ignition. Um, there's no sign of um, hot spots caused by the piston overheating or melting. There's no um, erosion. Now, early days sometimes you'd see a piston come out of a Subaru it looks like it's just collapsed because it's completely melted. But this is a typical trend that happens even in a factory standard Subaru piston um, if it's been driven hard and the hyperutectic piston that Subaru uses is the cause of the weakness. Now, it's important to point out that this doesn't mean that Subaru makes shit pistons. Every car made by every manufacturer in the world has its strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about the two liter FA series engine in the current model WRX and the Forester. Well, we know the pistons are reasonably good in those, but the rods are the weakness and they uh, bend under certain boost levels and low points. Doesn't mean it's a bad quality rod. It just means every engine has a weakness depending on how you extend the performance and the uh, grunt that you're chasing out of it. So this is something, now what I wanted to point out is it will not always show up in a compression and a leak down test because you've got to remember that the oil control ring even though we've, uh, and the compression ring, we've pulled it out of the piston now, is still in place. And when this is in the engine, the components are still there, but over a period of time, the wear gets worse and worse and it does start to drop a little bit of compression. But what it does do is it, dramatically affects oil consumption and a dead giveaway on a Subaru EJ series engine is if you're consuming oil is a cracked piston ring land. So if we get a car that's come into our workshop here for a minor service and we pull a dipstick out before we do any work and it's very low on the dipstick, the first thing that we'll do is look at, look at its history, its modifications and its use and how often the client of the vehicle who owns the car has been checking the oil because the engine will run for a considerable amount of time with these broken parts in place and may not be immediately evident to you owning and driving the car, but if you run it out of oil because it's been consuming the oil and you will not know because it just disappears out the exhaust and it won't always be obvious in smoky um, oil residue as in blue smoke coming out of the exhaust, um, the number one thing that will be catastrophic is you run it low on oil, it'll then do a big end bearing and in an extreme situation it'll, it'll destroy the crankshaft and the big end bearings, and in the worst case, it'll actually lock the con rod to the crank and punch it out through the block. But normally on an EJ series engine, you'll hear a bearing rattle when it's low on oil, or it has been run low on oil and it's surged 
as the oil level has got so low that the oil has not been able to pick up enough oil to maintain oil pressure and then the knocking noise is the dead giveaway. So if you've got a Subaru EJ 2.5 um, and you've got the original hyper-detective pistons and you drive the car hard or you, if you have modified it or if you're running more than 17 psi boost all of those common modifications then this is something you need to think about you need to regularly check your oil i encourage you to keep an eye on your oil level every second time you fill it with fuel it's a really good habit to get into and if you start hearing any minor tapping noises at light throttle um, or the car feels like it's down on a little bit of power or most notably if you start seeing the oil level drop dramatically over a couple of um, uh, refuels, then that's a dead giveaway to then get a, a um, compression and leak down test done to try and determine if you have cracked pistons. And then of course, an ultimate inevitability is you need to pull the engine apart and give it a bit of a birthday. So we'll show you some of the upgrades that we're doing with this engine because it is our ongoing project car that we're working with White Line on. And it's a car that we've now got for a long period of time. Um, they've finished all their suspension upgrades. We've now taken over the project to do some more updates to give you some updates as well. Check out our other videos on this project vehicle as we progress through the job. We're going to have some really exciting um, R&D that we're going to go back and review. And uh, I'm sure you'll find that really interesting. But for now, my name is Brett Middleton. Check out our other videos. Make a comment at the bottom of this channel. And um, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. And we'll give another update soon. Bye for now.